So suppose that we have some data and we know that our data takes on a certain distribution and we represent the distribution that a, a single data point takes on as a random variable and we subscript by i, which just tells us which data point this is. And so for example, this could take a normal distribution with a mean mu and a standard deviation sigma square. Okay. So we're already familiar with the idea that when we take a sample of size n, well then we can define something else, we can define a new random variable, we'll call it x upper bar, so this is still a random variable, and this is going to be the distribution of the means of these samples drawn from this original distribution of data. So we can call this our data and then we can write the distribution of the means, which is going to have a normal distribution as well, with the same mean as the data, but it's going to have a scaled variance. The variance is going to be sigma squared, the variance of the, the, the original distribution, divided by n, which is the sample size. And you can sort of see why this intuitively makes sense. As n gets very, very big, the variance of this distribution gets very, very small. And this basically tells us that if we take a very large sample, i.e. if we take a sample that's approaching the size of the population, then the sample mean that we get is going to be very, very close to the population mean. Whereas if we have a smaller sample, oh, it allows for more variance of our sample mean around the population mean mu, okay? And so we've got some distribution of data and some distribution of our sample mean. And we'll call this the sampling distribution. So what we're going to cover today is this idea of standardization. And standardization is basically a, a transformation of a random variable so that it takes a particularly nice and standard form. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to transform both of these random variables so that they have a standard normal distribution, so that they have a distribution that's normal with a mean zero and a variance one. Okay, well, let's start with just turning the mean to zero. And first let's use this data distribution, okay? And notice if we ask for the expectation of this data, okay, well, that's just gonna be the mean, it's gonna be mu. And now suppose we define a new random variable, which is just xi minus mu, okay? And then we ask for the, you know, the expected value of this new random variable. Well, we know from our previous lesson that, well, the, the expectation of a sum of two different random variables is just, you know, the sum of the expectations. And so we can rewrite this as the expectation of xi minus the expectation of mu. But remember, mu is just a number. Mu is not a random variable like x. And so when if I asked you the expected value of just a number, well, it's gonna be that number. And so I can rewrite this, substituting in the solution for the expectation of xi as mu, as mu minus mu, which is gonna be equal to zero. And so we've sort of done our first step here. We've taken this random variable x and we've converted its mean we converted its expected value to a value of zero. We're halfway to the process of standardizing that variable. Okay, and so this is sort of halfway there. The next thing we wanna do is take the variance of this random variable, which is currently sigma square, and make it one, okay? And I mean, to do this, to do this, we just have to remember a very useful rule. And if we ask for the variance of this variable xi, well, we can say, well, the variance of this variable is sigma square. We know that. But remember, if I, if I take the variance of some constant times my random variable, with the answer I get is that constant squared just times the variance of the variable, of the random variable. When I rewrite this, I get a squared sigma square. Okay. Well, so now I need to choose an a square such that when I multiply my random variable by that number, the, x, the variance of that new random variable is gonna be equal to one. And we can see an obvious choice here is gonna be one on sigma. And so we get one on sigma squared times sigma squared, which is gonna be equal to one. Okay, and so let's write that out. Let's write the variance of 
one on sigma xi. What's going to be one on sigma squared times sigma squared, which is equal to one. Okay. And notice we can apply this same transformation to xi minus mu, and it won't have a different result. It will still be one on sigma squared times sigma squared equals one. Okay. And so we can write this out a final time. We can say, well, the expected value of this random variable, we know it's zero. If we try and figure out the expected value of xi minus its mean divided by its standard deviation, well, that's just going to be one on sigma times the expected value of xi minus mu, which is one on sigma times zero, which is still zero. And then we ask for the variance of this new random variable. Well, that's just going to be the variance of xi minus mu on sigma. Oh, and since, since mu is just a constant, that's not going to contribute to the variance at all. So it's just going to be equal to the variance of this random variable, which is equal to one. And so now we've defined sort of a transformation of this random variable, okay, xi minus mu divided by sigma that has a mean zero and a variance of one. And since these were linear transformations, well, that's not going to change the fact that, you know, this random variable, fundamentally speaking, is still normally distributed. And so we can actually write out the exact distribution of this new random variable. We can say, okay, well, this new random variable xi minus mu divided by sigma is distributed normally with mean zero and variance one. Okay. And we actually sometimes call this z, where z is the standard normal distribution. So this rule works generally with any normally distributed random variable. If we simply take the random variable, minus away the mean, and divide by the standard deviation, we will transform that variable into a standard normal random variable. And so let's try out this new technique with our sampling distribution. Okay. And so we should just be able to take our random variable. Okay, that's x bar. We want to minus the mean of the random variable which is actually in this case, it's still mu. And then we want to divide by the standard deviation of this random variable. But this is a different random variable. The standard deviation isn't the same as here. It's not sigma squared. It's sigma squared on n. So the variance is sigma squared on n. And so to get the standard deviation, we need to take the square root of sigma squared on n, which is going to be sigma, because the square root of sigma squared is sigma, divided by the square root of n. Sigma divided by the square root of n. So this is n, this is mu. And then we know that this is going to be distributed normally with mean zero and standard deviation one, or we call this the standard normal again. This rule comes in a lot of use when we want to construct probability intervals for our random variables. And so for example, we wanted to construct a probability, probability interval around the mean of a random variable that contains, say, 90% of all the relevant observations. Okay. And so let's ask the question, how far away to the left and the right of the mean do I have to be in a standard normal distribution to contain 90% of the observations? Well, I know since a normal distribution is symmetric, that the distance is going to be equally far to the left as it is to the right. So there's going to be 90% of observations in here and 5% to the left and right of this interval. And the bounds of this interval are going to be defined by the lower and the upper bound, which I'll call L and U. But now we need to know how to get the specific values for L and U. Well, we know one thing about these values. For example, the probability that my random variable, my standard normal random variable, is less than equal to the upper value, what's well, going to be 5% plus 90%, it's going to be 0 0.95. Well, if we know the probability of a standard normal variable being less than or equal to a particular value, here it's 0 0.95, well, we can just look up this value, this u, in a standard normal table. And so we can say u equals, and the value is going to be called z, 0 0.95 and we can just look this value up in a standard normal table and if we do look at this value up it's going to be equal to 1.645 
Now we know as well that since L is as far away from zero as U is, well that L is just gonna be the negative of U, which is just gonna be negative 1.645. And so now I can say, if I want to contain 90% of the values in a standard normal distribution, I just have to be between the values of minus 1.645 and plus 1.645. Well, that's halfway there, but I actually want to know which values I have to be between to capture 90% of the possible values for this distribution. And it's a simple process to convert this interval from minus 1.645 to positive 1.645 to a relevant interval for our random variable x bar. We first get the, the right bound of this interval by noting that x bar minus mu divided by sigma on root n, which is distributed standard normal, has to be less than or equal to 1.645. And now we can simply rearrange this equation to get a statement in terms of x bar. And so the first step we're going to do is we're going to multiply both sides by sigma on root n, which gives us x bar minus mu is less than or equal to 1.645 times sigma on root n. And then we've got another step. We plus mu to both sides to get x bar is less than or equal to mu plus 1.645 times the standard deviation of this distribution. Okay. We can repeat the same steps simply substituting greater than or equal and negative 1.645 to get the left bound for this, which is going to be mu minus 1.645 times the standard deviation of our distribution is going to be less than or equal to x bar. And we can write this out a bit more formally. We can say 90% of all the values that our random variable takes are going to be in this interval from the left bound of the interval, which is the mean minus 1.645 times the standard deviation, which is sigma on root n, up to the mean plus 1.645 times the standard deviation of our distribution. And so this technique of normalizing a random variable, figuring out the critical values to capture a certain amount of the probability, and then using this transformation to convert these standard normal values into values for our distribution works for any normal variable.